everybody, welcome back. It's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw Viscasha. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intros Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so here is the, um, Viscacha rabbit-looking thing that we drew last week. So, um, like always, right, you know, its eyes are closed, they kind of, <laughs> they're very cute. Um, so we're going to start by building up um, the sort of a, I, I call it a secondary sketch layer um, because it's where the, the fur, it's the fur color, it's the fur pattern. The cheeks are a bit brighter and right around the eyes as well than the rest of the face. So I'm probably going to turn this into like a slightly lighter color, but for now, right in the middle of the nose, um, the lines will go all the way up you know, and staggering one line next to another. And then typically what I do to make sure I'm keeping my, avoiding any line conflicts, is I will angle out these lines towards the edge of the eye. Um, and then when I get above the eye, I swoop it up and below the eye, we'll swoop it down. But again, I may be changing the color for that. Um, in fact, I'm almost certain I will. So I'm not gonna fully commit to getting right around the eyes yet. Um, and we'll build this down, you know, coming straight off. Sometimes there's variations in, um, where it's sometimes difficult. Sometimes there's variations in like wrinkles or something else, in which case I'd loop it, right? You have like the, the nose here, so it might loop a bit and it's going to loop as I'm bringing it changing the direction but otherwise for the most part I'll keep it going straight off and we can push this down a little bit so same thing on this side right we'll aim this for the corner of the eye and then above it'll go up and over right up and over and then below it'll swoop under and again I'm not fully committing to that because it's a different color uh, just that little bit. Now you see it sometimes with animals right around their eyes or their usually their mouths and underneath but sometimes they're um, right by their eyes as well. And so just pulling this out and then we'll we'll change the color in just a second. The ears sometimes look a little bit more gray, but I'm going to keep them the brown. I don't know that that really matters. They're, um, they look a lot like rabbits, like, <laughs> almost like cartoon rabbits. So then as I pull it up, right, this will angle off. Um, and it'll kind of all merge together. So there's not like a weird harsh line. It just kind of angles out in that way, right? where it all kind of meets. Um, I'm gonna bring this a little bit further down, just like I did on the other side. Go ahead and get the ears in. Um, the hair on the ears is often a bit shorter, much like the hair right down by the nose. By the nose, it tends to be more consistently shorter. It's not always shorter by the ears, depends on the animal. You know, some dogs, the hair on their ears is really long. Um, or other animals, I'm sure, as well, that I'm not currently thinking of. And then just sort of build that up. Right, and then also making sure it's pulling off. So you have just like up the head, and you have that one coming up the middle, and then others as they sort of pop up beyond and then save frequently. All right, so I'm gonna change this to white, but I might, actually, I might dull that out to like super off-white. Uh, we'll do the white. We'll see how that goes. My hesitation is it's at such a strong contrast and I don't think it's that much of a contrast when I look at them. In, in pictures and stuff. So we won't do a full white. I'm going to come down here though and 
add this is my color swatch for when I need it because sometimes you know when I'm sketching like this it won't fully come in all right so then you know continuing pulling the lines straight off of the nose so again I'm not looping it not until I get down to the bottom potentially it'll just kind of come straight off otherwise um, you do end up with some line conflicts and their you know their mouths are kind of weird down there so a little semblance of a mouth of a chin I should say which forms the mouth and then as it comes inward that would pop inward so same thing on this side Right, you have hair coming straight off the nose. And then we'll do by the eyes. Straight off the nose and then turning inward as it comes towards the middle. And then um, the fact we're stopping the lines will help indicate where the mouth is. So don't make any wild, crazy lines that are too big. And his eyes are closed, so this should go a little faster because of that. I won't be drawing in the eyes like I usually do. All right, we'll have that little bit of a mouth tucking out down here. So if I took this off, that's what we're looking at so far. All right, so above the eye, right, sort of swooping because our eyes are a ball in our head, so we have kind of that swooping action. And then underneath the eye, it'll come straight down usually a little differently but usually the eyes are open All right swoop up and then down here swooping down yeah it's definitely a good start okay so gonna get the nose which will be the same color as the darker fur um, I'm gonna do it on another um, layer <laughs> okay so um, it's just gonna kind of be you know smaller leaving gaps there there Roses seem to kind of blend in a bit with their faces. Like you can see it. Uh, they have some black in their fur too, and I'm not really including that. But um, we have the gaps where the nostrils are. So just kind of making sure <laughs> that the nostrils are somewhat even because they're not at the moment. All right. So bring this down. this up and then even it out on both sides right and I can see it a little better here right narrow this out fixing just a few things on the fly okay the other thing we're going to do is um, get the ears all the way. Um, they'll be white coming out of, you know, from behind here. But the rest of it is going to be the um, ears, so, or the, the same dark fur color. So just filling that in. I'm going to finish getting the ears in and I will be right back. And then we'll add white fluffs. Just kind of coming out of nothing big. It's it's kind of like rabbit's ears. They've, they've got kind of not the big fluff that we'll see with some animals. It's just kind of this white fluff poking out. So we'll have that poking all the way out. Same thing over here, right? Kind of poking out of the ear there. 
And it's okay if it's not straight. You can see I'm changing my pattern. You get that a lot with the ear fluff. It'll go kind of in different ways just because of the nature of how it is. Okay. So that's where we stand huh. so far. So we're going to start um, with the darker fur color. And I am going to take off, yeah, these, when I'm just sort of sketching out sometimes the lighter color, it, right, I, and I intentionally did this, I made it very close to the darker. That means I can't, I can see it, but it's easier if I take it off. Um, so, I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the right. So always that means above and in front of, not beside or um, behind. Uh, it's coming, you know, from above the right and coming down. So, I'm going to use light pin pressure to fill in this back side. Maybe a little straighter than what I just did. So it's not full pin pressure. This will be in shadow. So backing off the pin pressure lightens it up. And um, some of this will be in highlight, but I'm going to give myself what I call a long runway. Basically making more shadow than I need because it's easier to add highlight than it is to take highlight away in, with, with this particular style. Alright, so... It's going to come all the way down. It's just a matter of getting the, the shadows in. Um, all edges will be in shadow, so even this side is going to have a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And that um, will shift as we start adding some highlights, because we'll have to blend the highlights into the shadow. I don't give myself a long runway on this side. So just that light pin pressure, that's how we indicate something's round. Now if the light source were next to it, that's not true. That would be highlighting the edge, but because the light source is in front of it, not so much. And if the light source was behind it, you would get like a silhouette around the edge, so the edges would be brighter as well. Um, potentially including like the head or something else, depending on where the light source is. And then, you know, you can control how much the ears are tucked back, depending on how much um, shadowing we do, where the ears would be connecting in. There definitely would be here. Question is, would they be connecting at any point through here? The answer is probably, but... Okay. So... I'm going to finish out the rest of this shadow on this side, and I'll be right back. Okay, and then the ears, you have, you know, the back side of this ear is turned away, so this is facing away from the light source. And in theory, you have this little section, which is an edge, and I may decide to add highlight to. Um, over here, kind of opposite is true. This little bit of shadowing is going to kick in because the ear is turning away, much like it is on the same side of the light source. But otherwise, this other side is going to be more in shadow because this is the section that's turned away. And then, of course, the inside of the ears. So um, I'm going to do light pin pressure filling in both ears all the way up to the light. Um, and I'll be right back. There will be some highlighting in here, but it's going to be easier to just do both ears in shadow first. So I'll be right back. So then the rest of this is full pin pressure. Um, and you can see the difference full pin pressure causes, how much of a, of a big difference that is. Um, now where we're blending in um, more lines also, 
um, brighten so I don't have to do full pin pressure to create a brighter section, right? I add more lines in. This is still light pin pressure. You can see how it's coming on, but as I add more lines, it brightens it up really quickly. I'm gonna do that on areas where I'm blending it because otherwise um, it becomes hard to blend. So I want the full bright, but if I come up to the edge like this with full pin pressure, it makes it hard to blend that in. So. That's a way that I'll do it, and then I'll merge that with full pin pressure. See how I do that? This is full pin pressure here, and I'll merge that into this like backed off pin pressure. That is just a lot of lines, but hopefully it's still just as bright. And see how that's building up? And that allows me to merge it into areas that are um, in shadow. And then if I need to do more, right, I just keep adding more lines. If it's not as bright as I need it to be, if the full pin pressure stands out more, I'll just add lines until it blends better. Um, and then once I'm far enough away, I don't have to worry about that. It should blend nicely, put that full pin pressure back, and, and help it sort of pull in. So I'm going to finish out the rest of this color. Um, in highlight, and I will be right back uh, on the face. I'm going to finish it on the face. I'll talk about the ears separately. So we're about to get into the ears. But you can see this is what I mean when I have a big runway is um, I give myself a little extra space to kind of fill in the backside because I can. It makes it easier to blend um, instead of having a quick transition. You don't want the transition from shadow to highlight, vice versa, to be jarring because it stands out to us. So you want this to be able to blend nicely. And I'll push that varying degrees of brightness down to get the right kind of transition over so it doesn't look like there's a sudden change. But now on to the ears, you'd have, you know, a section of highlight. But same thing, because we're dealing with such a small space, I'm going to use more strokes to brighten it rather than um, more pin pressure. Right, so filling this up all the way over, and run that into, um, you know, the head here. And then same thing on this side, right? More lines rather than more pin pressure will brighten it up because it's this year's turn, so it's going to be catching that light. Depending on how far down the ear goes, it might not, you know, be so bright all the way down. Like if it's really down here and the head's blocking it, um, it might not be so um, bright as far down but um, they're pretty high up on the head, so that would catch. And then we have kind of the inside of the ears here where, um, you know, I'll do a little bit of a burst right along the outside here. It's nothing big, and all I'm doing, again, is adding more lines, not more pin pressure, right? Filling this in. Just a little bit, and then blending it. It was a little too much. That's fine. The white will temper some of that too. And then we'll do the same thing over here, but less. 
Right, that's also why there's a gap here. It's going into the ear, and I don't want um, this side to seem like it's in a bigger highlight than the other. But because of the way the ear's shaped, it's probably catching a little bit of light, so we'll brighten that up just a little bit. Again, making sure this is brighter. Alrighty. Now we have the other color. So I can go ahead and throw that layer back on. And then, um, they really are kind of cute. Same considerations though, right? Like we're gonna have shadow underneath as the mouth kind of turns. And that would be on both sides. And then a little bit of shadowing on the on this back side, but it's not gonna be as much as it seems because it will be partly turned. You know, the nose isn't blocking much, so a lot of this is actually going to be in highlight over here. You can see it with the way this cuts down, right? A lot of that's going to be in highlight. So just adding this little bit of shadowing as we come across and making sure it's nice and blended in to the face. Might do the whole thing in shadow. I usually do. I didn't this time because it's such a big area. Didn't think I needed it, but we'll see. Um, and then for this, right, this whole inside is turning inward, so this is in shadow. On the right, you know, on this one on that inside line. And then again, just like the other one, underneath will definitely be in shadow because that's underneath. So clearly blocking the light, that light pin pressure. So it pulls over. And then, um, what I haven't decided yet is if this is an edge, because if it is an edge, which it might be, I do have a different fur direction which indicates this sticks out, in which case that would be in shadow because all edges are in shadow. If I can't see where it's landing, it would be in shadow. And then the chin, I'm going to do is all shadow, but it will have a little bit of highlight on it. So just this little bit. Well, that's the chin. <laughs> it's pretty small on these little guys. All right, and then we can adjust as needed. And then, you know, we'll have shadow down where it's going under in the eye here, all edges in shadow. So as this eye bulges, this will be in shadow. Same thing with underneath, that edge is in shadow making sure it's lining up. Um, and then, you know, all the way on that top line of the eye. And then same thing over here, right? We have this big section of shadow, so I'm actually gonna do this whole thing in shadow, but probably not sticking that way. And then up here, likewise, you have that edge coming out in shadow. I'm gonna fix, um, uh, where I have the ear coming down. And then try to match both sides. Right, I wanna make sure both sides look like they're about the same as far as their shadowing and everything else goes. Okay. And the rest of this should be highlight. Right, so like before, adding more lines, Oh, actually, let me start a new layer for that. Um, like before, I'm adding more lines, not more pin pressure, because it's a small space. And then 
going into full pin pressures, we come up to an edge. Same thing underneath, right on this edge, it's more lines to create the highlight. There would definitively be highlight under the eye. Right, and then I'm gonna push this color, which I did up above as well, push the color into the other. That'll help um, blend it a little bit better. Same thing over here. There is gonna be highlight. We've already filled it in with more lines. So I'm gonna fill it in with enough to add a highlight. And then blend it like we did on the other side. All right, so pull this color further over. And then underneath, same thing. Catching just that bit, but matching it to the surrounding area as far as how blended it would be. Now I can really see if I need to make any other adjustments to the eyes. Pull this up a bit. Yeah. All right, and then down here, same thing. We're gonna have more lines, not more pen pressure as we fill this in. And then it comes into this middle, kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna finish out um, both cheeks and I'll be right back. Now I'm just actually gonna finish the cheeks and then give a little bit of a burst. Again, nothing big. You see, that's just about it, right underneath. Gives it just enough that it's there, but not enough that it takes away from anything. And then again, blending out this color by pushing it into the, the darker color. It's always easier to take a lighter color and push it into a darker than the other way around. Okay, so um, we've got to do the nose and fix the ears, right? Like I have the ears here not coming down far enough because it doesn't go all the way into the head. So we just need to fix that by pushing this in and making sure it goes all the way into the head. Just like that. Okay, so then the nose. Balancing out. Okay. We're gonna do full pin pressure till we get by the nostrils. Full pin pressure. And then, you know, we'll pull this over kind of underneath. We'll have a little bit, a little bit over there. And then, right, we'll have. A little bit here, and if we need to make it smaller, which I think we do on this side, we can, right? Just to balance both sides out. Yeah. Okay. But we want this to kind of seamlessly bend, blend, so we'll take out that edge. The nose shouldn't have an edge, really. It should be matching what's happening around it. It's just distinctly a little different, right? Blend that in a bit with how it's gonna look. Yeah. So then all we really have is the white on the ears and any whiskers, and we'll be we'll be done. I think we are gonna add whiskers. So white on the ears, right? I'm gonna do this really, you know, doesn't take much. This is again backed off pin pressure at first because I wanna build this up slowly. Um, I don't want the white of the ears to be overpowering. Um, I did start a new layer, right? Yeah, I did. All right. And so same thing over here. White of the ears, just sort of filling it in 
with more lines to get the base fill in. And then um, I'll add a little burst of light. It's not going to be anything major, though, the nature of, of how it is. It's OK if they're, you know, turned and twisted. And so then on this side, it's going to be more of the tips of the ears, closer towards the right. That's going to have some highlighting. And then on this side, it's going to be more kind of in the middle. So not the tips and not the base. It's hard to do because there's not a lot of space. That kind of rhymed. Look at me. OK. And then if we do you know, whiskers, it's just you know, light pin pressure drawing at the shoulder. I don't have a lot of space, so I can't do much. I think their whiskers are black, but you know, still exciting to add some. I think it adds a nice element to it. Sort of clustering them up. And then whatever you do on one side, you know, do on the other. Light, light pin pressure. You'll be able to see them better on one side than the other. And don't do them weird like I just did. Right, and uh, there we go. All right, so that's how you draw a Viscasha. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.